so far for four bucks and a little bit extra time, uh, it worked out perfectly. Okay, snuck away at lunch to head over to Klingspor to see if they have a uh, injection kit so that I can inject some resin into the little crevices of the tabletop. So we're going to head in and see if they have what we're looking for. I think I got what we need. Let's see, we got the uh, a little syringe kit. It's only a couple bucks. Uh, it doesn't say that it's for epoxies, but it says glues, inks, lubricants, sealants, coatings, and all types of liquids and pastes. So the epoxy's somewhere in between there. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, it's a few days later, and I'm ready to start using the dispensers that I got. <laughs> Stir for four minutes. Okay, so now we're done stirring. Go with this one. Okay, I think we're gonna have to pour it in from the back. Oh yeah, that works like a charm. So like right here, there's kind of a crack and I want to see if I can lay a very thin line of epoxy. Alright, so I refilled and it was really just a matter of pouring it in. Um, however, I did check our working time and we only have about six minutes left. You know what I'm going to do actually? I'm going to pour this side so we can kind of see the difference. Uh, the next thing that I want to try and solve for is the air bubbles, and I'm going to do that by testing the heat gun. So I just want to show off the difference in the pouring method versus the injection method. Um, here, this first side I poured as an example. And you can just see the overspill here, right up to the first half. And granted, I don't have the steadiest hand in the world, so pouring for me is a little more challenging. Now, if we go down to the other end where I did the injection. I mean, that's just all the globs are where my steady hand failed me. So that's just so much easier to 
that's going to be so much easier to sand off. And yeah, I mean, assuming it works fine, the heat treatment worked just the same. Um, the air bubbles, I don't know if there's a way to get less air bubbles when injecting, but by using the heat gun, it popped most of the surface level ones and the bigger ones popped on their own anyways. So um, I'll have to wait and see when it cures what it looks like. Uh, and I think I'm going to need a second application anyways, but so far for four bucks and a little bit extra time, uh, it worked out perfectly. I didn't have any issues with the working time being adjusted. Um, for me, who doesn't have a great steady hand, the amount of air bubbles was the same. Um, it'll just come down to taking a look at how it cures to see if I can get that same glass finish with a more precise application. It's been about seven hours since I did the pour and applied the epoxy with the needle. And here you can see the pour, and here's the needle. And the only difference that I can see is, like I thought, the needle is gonna have a lot less sanding and cleanup. Because there's just a whole lot less on the surface. I see no reason not to use this method going forward.